All right, if you're using Google Sheets, you may have just a list of dates and you want to count how many of those dates lie between two different dates. In this case, we're going to say between February 17th and February 28th. We're showing which dates we want to pick up here with green check marks and we'll write out the formula. So all of these formulas are going to be using the count ifs function. And the first argument that the count ifs function takes is the range. So this is all of the dates that you want to count. You can type that in or just select them with your mouse like I did. And we'll do a comma because now we're ready to specify the first criterion. And because you're doing a date, which is a number in this function, you have to surround it in quotes, which isn't typical for spreadsheet functions, but for the count ifs you need to. So we'll see a greater than, so that's your operator and then two slash 17 slash 2022. And if that doesn't work for you, these next examples, we're going to do it a little bit differently. This method is probably the fastest when you just type it into here, but in our following examples, we'll do this differently so it could be a bit more reliable. But for now, we're just going to get this done the easy way. So February 17th, 2022. And then for our next criterion, we already said what we wanted to be greater than, now we want to say what we want it to be less than, right? But we're working with the same range. So first we will specify that and then open the quotes again. And our second operator will be less than, because you want everything that's less than to 2822. So this is what captures all of the dates in between. Enter and you get a two. All right, so just typing them in is the easiest way, but you may want some more flexibility. So what you can do is you can put the dates outside of the function and reference them with the formula. So we will do a count ifs again. And we'll, we will be looking at the same range. So these dates are the same. They're in the same order. But now we want to start out with the quote. So, so far it's the same, right? Greater than, but now it gets different because you want to end this part of the criteria with a quote. So you're done with the quotes now and you have to join it with an ampersand to a cell reference. So now if you want to change this from February 17th to another date, you don't have to go in the formula. You can just change it in here. And this cell reference could be within the range of your data that you're counting if it happens to be in there. But the way we're doing it, it's a little bit more clear to leave them out here. Uh, but we're done with the first criterion. Let's do the second one. So it will be the same range. Do a comma. And we'll just do the less than. And we'll join it to this second date. That's our ending date. Ending parentheses. And there we go. So we have the same result. The formula is a little bit different in how things are placed, but it's accomplishing the same thing. So as we go through these examples, you can grab your own copy of this spreadsheet to have and use wherever you want. Just go to the link in the description, sheetshelp.com, count cells between two dates. All right, so you can get your own copy and follow along. And let's go to the third one. And this is similar in the beginning, so I'll just get through this part. But instead of typing out the dates or using a cell reference, what we're going to do is use a date function. And this is really the most reliable way to put in dates because it doesn't allow you to switch the order around and it wants just numbers. So you want the year, we're gonna type in 2022. You want the month, we're going to type in two for February and the day, the 17th. So you notice even though I'm in the United States, it wants this in year, month, day order. It's going to be the same where you live. And let me go back because I forgot the greater than. That's joined the same way that we did in the last example with the ampersand. Now I'm going to work faster here a little bit, copy this portion and paste it at the end. And this part will be less than. And we'll specify this date again with the date function. All right, well, we need one more parentheses because we have functions within functions here. So we have two layers. Hit enter, and that gives you a two. So we're getting the same result for all three of these, but in the real world with real data, this function might not always work, but by the time you get to this third technique, it should be pretty reliable for you.
And we'll throw in a bonus here if you're trying to include the start in the end date. All right, so in this case, you would want to pick up the February 28th, 2022. We'll scroll down to our last example here. And you just want a quick modification of the formula is you put the equal signs next to the greater than or less than operators. So this uh, side on the right is what's picking up to 228 because we say less than or equal to February 28th, 2022. Okay, and the count ifs function isn't only for dates. So we'll go through some more examples on how to use that in this next video. Thanks for watching. It's nice to have you along.